Hey guys, today we're gonna do an in-depth tutorial on how to TIG weld stainless steel exhaust tubing. We're gonna go over machine settings, setup, prep work, and actual techniques for when you're welding the material. This is a 2023 Husqvarna motorcycle racing exhaust made out of 18 gauge and 20 gauge 304 stainless steel. That's the material we're gonna be welding and learning about today. First, let's discuss our machine settings for this thin 18 gauge and 20 gauge stainless steel. And if you could, please hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be doing an entire in-depth school on TIG welding, on how to weld all different materials from stainless steel to chromoly to titanium and all different applications like exhaust, chassis, and much more. As you can see, this is one of our welding stations. We use Miller Dynasty products. They are great welders. They've worked really great for us. Okay, as for the settings, since we're welding steel or stainless steel, we want to be on DC. I like to be at 38 amps exactly for this thin material. We're going to set our pre-flow to 1.2. You want gas flowing out of the nozzle before you actually strike the arc to keep the electrode clean. We're gonna set our post flow to 10 seconds. That's the gas that's flowing out of the nozzle after you release the pedal. And you want that gas flowing out to keep the molten weld clean and shielded and free from contaminants. Now for our TIG torch setup. We're gonna use a large Monster 16 welding cup. And we wanna use a big gas lens in this application for maximum shielding. You could go even larger yet with your gas lens, but I found that the Monster 16 is the optimal welding cup for this application for just coverage and stability and consistency. The next item is the tungsten. I prefer to use a 16th inch 2% serrated gray band tungsten. Again, that is just from trial and error and testing and finding out that this tungsten offers the most consistency and stability. As for our gas settings with this nozzle, we're gonna wanna run about 30 to 35 CFH of argon through that Monster 16 cup. So let's talk about prep work here. So I grabbed two test pieces of inch and seven eighths, 18 gauge stainless steel, 304, and I like to scotch bright every seam before I weld it. When you're done with the Scotch-Brite, I like to acetone every seam. As you can see, our two test pieces are prepped, cleaned, and ready to be welded. All right, let's get these pieces tacked up. Before we can weld our piece, the last step is to get our back purge set up. What is back purge for the ones that don't know? Back purge is when you fill the inside of your part with argon, the same welding gas that you're using through your nozzle. You're gonna fill the inside of that part so there's argon on the underside of that weld to shield it from contaminants. It keeps the weld clean and really strong. So we use back purge pucks like this with fittings on them that go in each end of your part like this and they get sealed off and then there's an extra line on the regulator that you get to adjust your back purge CFH and you clip the line into this fitting and then it fills the inside of your part when you're welding it. For a small part like this, I'll only use like three or four CFH of argon to fill the inside. So now that our test piece has the back purge pucks installed, we're gonna connect the gas line. 
Now the inside of this part is filling up with argon so we can weld it. We're gonna use an 035 filler rod, 35 thousandths, and it's a filler rod called Super Missile. Its technical term is tensile weld. It's a special rod that I use on stainless steel. I use this rod because it's high in nickel and I found that it's very durable and can hold up to vibration. A lot of guys just use your normal stainless steel rods. It's just a preference thing. There's no right or wrong answer here. So there's multiple ways you can weld any given part. All welders have their own theories and their own ways that they like to do things and I think as long as the weld looks good and it's strong and it's good for that application, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way. But when it comes to welding exhaust, there's two ways to do it. One is the fast way that doesn't look quite as good. And the other way is what I would call a slower technique that you can make the part look really pretty and I'll break that down for you. The fast way is let's say you wanna do less start and stops. So let me grab my torch. You could start way down here and you could do 20 or 30 dips before you stop, okay? That's the fast way. And the downfall to the fast way is this current nozzle can't keep the gas coverage on that whole stretch that you just welded, that current molten weld. It's still gonna be strong, it's still gonna look good, but you're just gonna have a big hot spot in that weld, a, a blue or a purple hot spot. Because basically what happens is this back edge of the nozzle passes the current molten weld and it can no longer cover or shield that weld till it's fully cooled down. The second way to do it is the slow and the pretty way. You might only do 12 or 15 dips and you're gonna have multiple start and stops or more start and stops, I should say, and it takes longer, but if you do shorter runs, this nozzle can keep your current weld, your current short welds, completely covered until it fully cools down. So what that means is you can keep the entire weld all the way around like a gold or a straw color, which customers like to see. They think that looks pretty and I think that looks pretty as well. Okay, we are done. You can see here the finished weld. It is a warm straw gold color. So if you were paying attention, you can see that I decided to do the long, pretty version of welding on this seam. I did about 13 dips per start and stop. It takes longer, but it certainly looks good when it's done and the customer is happy.